So here we are in session view. I've got my live devices browser open. If I click on the audio effects list, there's all the different devices that we can add to ascend and return. Now I'm going to go up to insert and select insert return track. I'm going to go up back to the insert menu and just do that again. So now I've got two return tracks just over on the right hand side by the master track. Notice how we now have little send pots on the audio track. I'm just going to get rid of that MIDI track, we don't need that. If I insert another audio track, notice straight away I now have two send pots on that new audio track. Okay, so now we're going to add some effects devices to those returns. I'm just going to pick up and drag the ping pong delay and just drop it on top of return A. So that's added ping pong delay to return A. I'm going to go into the reverb devices. There's a really nice one in here, long tail, that's the one I normally use. I'm going to pick that up and drag it over onto B return. So now I've got ping pong delay on A, reverb on B. So as we turn up those corresponding pots, a portion of the signal is then sent to the effects devices, the sound is affected and then returned to the original audio track. So let's use our send and returns now. And uh, to make our session view a little bit less cluttered, I've hidden, using this collapsing triangle, I've hidden the browser. Okay, I've got a breakbeat, just a simple two bar breakbeat in a clip. Sounds like this. It's got a nice clear snare on the breakbeat, and we're gonna use the send pots send signal to our effects devices. So I'm going to start turning up the sends for the ping pong delay. Now try just opening up that send just for a very short time. Just as the snare plays. Let's try that with the reverb on B, nice and quick. Now if I keep the reverb on the whole time, things start to get a bit full and muddy. So just a very short spike opening up the reverb and the delay. Just on top of that snare gives a really nice effect. Naturally this is great for DJing. Now eventually we're going to map these send pots on the audio tracks to a hardware controller. It makes it a little bit easier to work instead of having to use your mouse. So we've just been adding reverb and delay onto our clip just using the send pots. Now I'm going to try something different. We're going to automate the effects. I'm going to pick up and drag the clip onto the arrange view icon and just drop that clip into audio track number one in a range view. Go up to edit, and just using the duplicate function, I'm gonna duplicate that clip. Now I'm gonna use the Apple D or Control D keyboard shortcut to copy that clip over 32 bars. Now on the right hand side, just underneath audio track number one, we've got these two drop down chooser menus. Device Chooser, which is set to the mixer. And now we've got Reverb and Ping Pong, A and B, our effects devices, which we can now automate using Draw Mode. So I'm just gonna scroll over and draw in what are called nodes over that 32 bars. And as the sequencer plays through the pattern, when it reaches the nodes, it sends a signal to turn up the send on audio track number one. Now I just drew something in quite basic so you can see what's happening. Now let's switch back into session view. Now you'll be able to see that automation that I've just drawn in, in a range view. 
So the A pot is being turned up and turned down via the automation I've just drawn in. Now this little purple dot, that signifies that there's an automation change on that send control. Now I want you to listen to what happens at the end of this 32 bar stretch. I'm going to keep the send control open as we reach the end of the audio and you'll hear the ping pong delay echo off as it were into the distance. Let's look at how we can use that technique a little bit more creatively. Again, I'm going to draw in some automation for the ping pong delay. I'm going to focus in and zoom in on that last bar of 16. Just by clicking down and dragging over the audio, I'm just going to get rid of that last bar. Hit backspace and it's gone. Now this snare, and I can see it, I can see the peak on the audio. I'm going to use that snare and echo that snare off into the break. Now if I switch to draw mode, my mouse, Apple B, I'm just going to draw in an automation change. Now I'm going to come out of draw mode, back into my arrow. And you can see now we've got little circles called nodes, which we can move about get a slightly smoother automation. Let's zoom out, let's see how that sounds. So we've filled up that gap at the end of the 16th bar with an echo. So we've drawn in some automation for our ping pong delay. Now using the control chooser, we can determine which of the two returns we see. Ping pong or reverb. So let's draw some automation in for the reverb. I'm going to take another snare, quickly change the draw mode. Draw something in. And now we have both, reverb and ping pong delay. And we can view either one just using the control chooser. Now if you're using more than one effects device, for instance, here we're using ping pong delay and the reverb. We've got the reverb set up on return B and ping pong on A. We can only see one, but if we use this add automation lane button, we can now device chooser, select mixer, reverb, and now we've got both. We've got the ping pong delay underneath, and if I go into draw mode, we can now draw in automation for the reverb as well. Really, really useful. We can see exactly where the different automation comes in. Time things perfectly.